Church here in Edinburgh, we are doing a series kind of looking at kind of faith. So uh, for today's, I guess maybe for 2020, it's a bit of a focus on faith. And uh, we're specifically kind of looking at meditation kind of on the word. Uh, so we'll go into that. Uh, we have been inspired by uh, the book um, Radical Faith by Randy McKee. So 10 great <laughs> secrets. One of them is to drop your paper. Um, and uh, so for today, we're going to look at one of those. The first uh, secret that uh, Randy has is God's word and potential faith. So the kind of key crux, if you want, if you can be bothered to read the book, would be more of God's word uh, gives more potential faith. So uh, the more kind of word we have, the, the crux and the premises that the more potential faith we have. And I guess the potential, the, the ways to have more word of God's word, there's the ability to either kind of read more, so you could uh, read lots and lots and lots of the Bible, so more pages. Uh, you could read more deeply, so, um, or you could, and also kind of the frequency as well, so you could do these kind of things. So uh, today's, um, uh, and this is probably the key, or one of the, the key messages that comes from uh, the book, Romans 10, 17, where it says, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. So that's the, the kind of the, the essence of, of kind of today's parts. Uh, today's sermon is going to be looking at kind of meditation uh, and meditating on the word. So looking more at depth. So not looking at covering uh, vast tracts of the scripture, but looking at uh, how to, to look at it in a deeper kind of way. Um, and today's kind of a lesson comes inspired by a sermon by Timothy Keller. So. Um, Watch mm -hmm. this, just stole it from him. And there's three kind of a, um, focus on faith, meditation, and the word. So we we'll look at a perspective, so to delight uh, in the word, a promise uh, to grow through the word, and a practice on how to meditate on the word. So these three things. And uh, Psalm 1 is going to be the key kind of passage, so if you have your Bibles, open it or press the right buttons to get to that page, we should do it electronically. Uh, so this is really going to be the, the kind of the, the crux of, or the key kind of uh, passage from, from today's uh, kind of lesson. So read through that and you can basically have the Bible open there, we're not going to flick around kind of too much. Okay, so let's say uh, read Psalm 1. It says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that, is, that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. So, uh, the first part we're going to look at is uh, in verse 2, it says, uh, that person, um, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord. So this is the perspective, to delight uh, in the word. And uh, I was going to ask, uh, what are some of the things that uh, you kind of delight in? What are, uh, you know, what are the kind of the, the things that you kind of delight in? Like, Hells and mountains. Hells and mountains, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see more. Even that we can take the next breath of fresh air because God gave us life. You know, okay. our next very breath, but yeah. we're still alive to be grateful to God for that. Yeah, so to lighting in the life, Simon? I think wife. The wife, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 Great answer in there, is it? Change the ghost. Yeah. Lee, please. Family. Family, yeah. Family, yeah. yeah. Uh, Rahul? Food. Food, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just any, any food, just don't, don't, don't discriminate, right? just all food. <laughs> Ian? The smell of the plants after the rain, that's oh, yeah, that's, that's a good one, it's hard to take an image of that. 
Uh, any other delights that you have? When do you Friends, seeing friends, friends yeah. especially if you've not seen them in a while. Yeah. John? Carry on, Pete. Carry on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have the screen actually. It's potentially all seen together and bless it. Okay. Mike, you're going to do that. Really well written computer book. That's pretty much the same. It's pretty much the same. It's pretty much the same. It's kind of like the same thing for you. All the stuff. Uh, those at the back. The sun, yeah. Um, was yeah, a kind of so mythical kind of beast, as it were. Uh, ben? Ashton Villa in the cup. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, Tina? Good things happening to people I love. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. And Helen in the back? Music and dancing, like there's no one watching. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah. And there's also like a delight in watching someone who thinks they're dancing. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, there's lots of kind of things that we kind of um, kind of delight in. I, I was kind of thinking about having like a, a delight kind of bingo. I was thinking what we could do is ask that kind of question and like have a range of things that would kind of come up. And I was kind of pretty sure someone was going to say football. Um, and I felt like yeah. it's probably, there, probably going to be Ben, maybe <laughs> or kind of Goldie, but sometimes. <laughs> Depending on which team it is, there's less kind of delight and more just like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you decide which one you are in that. But yeah, so for me, I think some of the things that kind of stand out to this is just kind of uh, being out, outdoors, kind of mm. being able to be in the, the kind of wilderness, um, I think being able to have food after that as well. So kind of these uh, sort of landscapes and places you kind of know. Uh, maybe the kind of the friendship and the connections oh, yeah. as well, so uh, you can try and see yourself if you can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, okay, Why is contractually obliged to kind of put that up once in a while? So there's uh, you know, lots of things that we kind of um, uh, delight in. <coughs> and um, so in uh, verse kind of 2 it says, but uh, those who delight in the, the law of the Lord. And uh, when it says that the law of the Lord, um, yeah, sorry, uh, when it says the law of the Lord, uh, it really kind of talks here. Kind of, I often thought this meant uh, Leviticus, you know, like the the, the law is written in the there in parts of the land. It's, it's kind of pretty of a hard gig to delight in this. You know, it's, it's, it's good. There's lots of stuff to to be insightful law, but it's also kind of quite it's kind of quite tough to digest. And they realise that actually uh, the law is far more than just the uh, Levitical kind of calls. And even kind of Jesus kind of references uh, this. So in John chapter 15, verse 24, you don't have to turn there, but it's on the screen. Uh, Jesus says, um, I have not done, if, I, if I had not done among them the works uh, no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. As it is, they have seen and yet they have not. Uh, they have hated both me and my father. But this is to fulfill what is written in their law. They hated me without reason. So these are uh, just the words of Jesus. Uh, the kind of key bit is that Jesus refers to this bit, they hated me without reason. Uh, and that comes from uh, Psalm 35 and 69. So Jesus refers to a Psalm as being the law, as part of the law. But you would kind of tend to think of that in that sort of way. So I guess it really kind of states that, you know, the, uh, all of kind of scripture is, is kind of here, you know, that delighting is not just in the, the law as we might often kind of think in terms of the uh, Levitical or, or what's written in Deuteronomy in the early days, but it's just the whole of scripture. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so I guess there's the kind of the question for us, like what do we kind of delight in, you know, like is the law, is the scripture is something that we kind of delight and take pleasure in? You think about the things that we kind of mentioned, the kind of the, uh, the good food, the good times, the good, good code that's written. There's a beauty and a wonder and a awe in the things that we kind of delight in. We delight in the things that have bring us kind of pleasure. Uh, we delight in the things that have just an intrinsic kind of value. The, the beauty of kind of poetry or dance or, or art or kind of music or things we kind of delight in. And I wonder for myself whether I kind of delight in the word. Often it's just a thing that we kind of do to kind of get through maybe the really bad computer code that you have to do you know, just to get things done. Or the not so good kind of music or the, the food that's a bit kind of boring or the football games that don't quite go your way as it were. But the, the scripture really says that 
there's the potential, there's sort of a perspective that we can have to delight in the word. So that's the perspective. Uh, we'll look now at the promise, so to grow through the word. So again, Psalm 1, uh, scripture, and these are the parts that relate to this. So blessed is the one, so the blessed is the, the kind of the promise of blessedness, and that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, wherever they do prospers. So the promise to grow through the word. Um, and blessed is, it's kind of like a tree. So it uses a metaphor. So it doesn't say you're literally a tree. Obviously that's not what you're there. Um, and it describes kind of, I guess, uh, three characteristics of the tree. So there's a, a tree and it's like it's planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in season and its leaf does not weather. So we'll look a little bit about each of those uh, kind of elements. Mm -hmm. So like a tree planted by streams of water. So um, a tree that's planted by streams of water has access to water. It's a bit of a profound statement that none of you would have, would have thought. Uh, it enables it to kind of endure uh, times of drought. And the depth of the root uh, closest to the water enable it to experience kind of stress. Uh, so this is a picture. For those that can see, uh, I might be able to recognise, it is a, I guess a satellite image, or it's a map actually, um, of the, the Nile. Uh, so the Nile is the big green bit, uh, going through, I guess, the not-so-green bit. Um, and uh, the not-so-green bit is obviously kind of the desert, and the green bit is the, the, the life. Uh, and you can see just how, um, in a short kind of distance, there's nothing, it's such a, a stark kind of contrast between the, the desert uh, and the, the Nile. And obviously the green bit you're seeing is actually the river you wouldn't be able to see because it's so small and thin. But the, the green that you see is just the, the life that's able to be there, it's able to uh, be fed and watered and uh, through being the, the closeness to, to the Nile. Uh, it's such a contrast to uh, to the surrounding areas. It's quite a, an unusual analogy, especially here in you know, Scotland, where you probably don't need to be that close to a river to, uh, to, kind of, uh, to, to have an ample supply of water. Uh, it's probably more dangerous actually being close to a river because you're more likely to get flooded or, or washed away. Um, and we can think as well about how Jesus, uh, when he met with the, uh, the Samaritan woman at the well, Kind of talked about um, the living water that, that he would give, that he would be able to provide this water. So Jesus said in John 14, indeed, the water I will give them become will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. <coughs> so this is uh, one of the characteristics of those that um, uh, kind of delight in the, the word and are able to kind of go through it that are planted um, by, a, by a river. And like a tree, it yields its fruit in season. So I guess the characteristics of that, it is fruitful. Um, but it's not always fruitful. It's not a tree that is ridiculously in fruit every moment of time. So there are times when it has fruit, uh, when it's in season. And there's times with light fruit when it's not in season. Um, and both are still blessed. Because uh, it says, blessed is a uh, person that's like a tree who is this. So it's, doesn't say that it's blessed when it's in the season of fruit, and it doesn't say it's blessed when it's not uh, by definition there. So for us as well, we can go through periods where we might feel like we are bearing fruit, or we are fruitful in whatever you want to describe that, and times where that might not be the case, but uh, the tree can um, is blessed at those moments as well. And like a tree, um, its leaf does not wither. So uh, this kind of statement provides us a couple of things that there is the potential for it to wither. That uh, by definition it doesn't wither, but maybe it could. Uh, so there are there's the implication that there's going to be a time of testing, a time of stress. Uh, and there's the potential for that leaf to dry out. Uh, and the thing that kind of stops it from drying out is the depth of root that uh, allows the tree 
to get access to the water because uh, it's close to the, the, the stream um, and then also kind of minerals and uh, that's the kind of the, the, the key component, component that helps it to, to not dry out um, and for a thing to kind of grow, uh, for a plant to kind of grow, that's why uh, for those who've done biology and in the high so recently, uh, it's just a, a symbol of kind of photosynthesis, uh, which is easier to uh, explain than to say. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the kind of conversion of sunlight, the energy from sun, uh, into sugar, uh, and also one of the byproducts from that is kind of oxygen. Um, and water as well. And so one of the things for how a, a plant or a tree kind of grows, so um, a tree can grow at all times and it needs, I guess, kind of two kind of key components for it to kind of grow. It needs the kind of the roots to access um, water and kind of the essential kind of minerals and the such from the soil. Um, and then it needs the leaves to enable it to actually put on mass. So if you think of a tree growing and it changes from weighing, uh, say a tree weighs you know, 100 kilograms and then in 10 years time it weighs 120 kilograms. So those, those new 20 kilograms of, of tree, of, of wood, of mass, that really comes from the leaf. Um, that uh, it's part of it will be water that's taken up to the, to the root, but it's, it's actually the, the leaf which converts the, uh, the air, the carbon dioxide, um, with the water into solid material, into sugars that can then be converted to other kind of material. So for a, a plant to kind of grow, it needs its leaf to be green and for the leaves to function. If the leaves don't function, a plant just is in a stasis mode, as it were. So here uh, in the UK, in our seasonal elements, where the, uh, there's sort of the you look across kind of Edinburgh, you can see the uh, the trees that will have leaves in, in season, but not just now because it's kind of too cold. <coughs> they don't really kind of grow; they are still kind of alive, but they are not going to be able to put on any mass. So they're not going to be able to add any additional weight. What they get from the soil is really just water and and minerals. Um, so I can't uh, add any additional bulk to it and as such. Um, so just a, a kind of a concept that with this this plant has the ability to not weather mm. and so it has the ability to grow, to continually to grow. So it can grow at the times when it's not fruitful and it can grow in the times when there is a moment of stress and kind of drought that would be there because it has connection to the, the deep uh, the water that's in the depth of the soil. Um, so that is the kind of the promise for us to grow through the word. You know, I guess the kind of questions for us then are: Do we have depth? Do we have a depth like a, 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 a tree that's planted next to a, a stream? In stress, do we seek God when it's times of, of heat, the kind of the droughts, as it were? Do we kind of go down and deep to, to get that, that water so that our leaves can still remain green and not dry out so that you can still grow despite the stress that we're under? And uh, I guess this kind of tree is like one that is steady and ready for fruit. You know, it is experiencing a drought but it's steady and when the conditions change it can be fruitful. So this is a promise and this is a, trees is blessed as a person that is blessed and the implication is that we can have that kind of blessing as well. Amen. Amen. Oh, okay. Do we look then um, at uh, the perspective um, which is to delight in the word? We looked as well at um, the practice uh, the promise, well done, you are paying attention. Um, so we looked at the promise um, of how to uh, kind of grow through the word as well. And now we're going to look at the, the, the practice to meditate on the word. Mm -hmm. So again, this is Sam uh, you should probably still be there. So, and the key bit here is, uh, so blessing is the one, it's a blessing who does not walk in the steps 
with the wicked, or stands in the way of the sinners, take, or sit in the company of mockers, but those who delight in the law of the Lord, so that's the perspective, and who meditates on his law day and night, so that's the practice, and then the promise, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prosper. So let's look at the practice to meditate on the word. Um, and uh, um, I was kind of thinking, like, meditating on the word, it sounds kind of really weird. Uh, it's not something I kind of know how to do. And uh, as I kind of mentioned, uh, much of this kind of sermon, especially this part, is really based uh, or inspired by a sermon I listened to by Tim the Keller. Um, and meditating on the word seems kind of really kind of weird. It's not mm. something I'm kind of used to or really understand, or uh, but something I've kind of hopefully have learnt. Um, and we'd like to kind of practice kind of more. I tried a little bit kind of last night, um, which I'll share about. Um, but it's one of those things that yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting kind of beast. And I was thinking about didn't get around to, to taking a picture, but to have an image of uh, kind of our associations of meditation can often be in a darkened kind of room with your legs crossed and your your hands kind of sitting out and potentially thinking of uh, the beach or, or mm -hmm. all this sort of stuff but I guess really uh, what's mentioned here isn't quite that kind of way and so for today we're going to look at three aspects of meditation three aspects of this kind of practice so trying to figure out what on earth what is it you know what's this all about uh, why would you want to meditate, what's the point in doing that? And then, I guess, finally, how to actually go by like, meditating, what does that actually kind of mean? Uh, so these are, in some ways, just a interpretation, there's probably other ways to look at this as well. Yeah. So, uh, what is it? So, uh, one of the definitions that's described of uh, meditation is, is being affecting of the heart with intense use of the mind. Ooh. So, uh, be worth reading that a couple more times. So, affecting of the heart, so kind of changing yourself, to changing your heart through with an intense kind of use of your mind. So it's a focused kind of use of your kind of mind. Um, and it feels like your head's going to hurt just kind of thinking of that, but it's not sort of that painful. Depends on how you push yourself. Uh, and this focus. Uh, on his loss, it's uh, um, from the kind of passage before. So it meditates on his law day and night. So that focus, that intense uh, <coughs> use of the mind, is with a focus on his law, which is you know, the word. So focus on, uh, on scripture. And uh, I guess why would you kind of do this? It mentions in. Um, 2 Timothy 3.16 that all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Mm -hmm. uh, so all scripture is God breathed and is useful. So I guess why would we kind of want to meditate? Well, the scriptures are useful. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're kind of from God. They have his kind of word in it. And uh, I guess over the last um, few weeks, uh, a number of us have been, I guess, meditating or focusing on the word, uh, specifically with kind of hearing, to, yeah. to see what, what that really means. And you know, later on today, Kieran's going to be baptised. Yeah. 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 So, so in many ways, it's like the affecting of the heart through that intense. Uh, use of the mind. Um, okay. So we looked at uh, what it is and why we did it. So it's a word, why we did it. Uh, so all scriptures got read. And why we would uh, want to meditate on this law is to understand really kind of God's will, His purpose, and His goodness. So to understand what God wants for us, what, his, uh, what he sees as being possible for us, and also his view on ourselves. Um, so there's sometimes where we can have a, a, like a wrong view on ourselves based on our own perceptions, where we look at 
the kind of the, ourselves, and we think that we are kind of um, worthless, and in many ways we kind of are. Mm -hmm. But God's view on ourselves is often so different. Mm -hmm. yeah, from that, that we, God's view is often that He values us kind of incredibly much. Mm -hmm. And likewise, we can also potentially have the, the exact uh, same and opposite, if that's not a contradiction in terms, which it might be, um, where we think that we are kind of amazing and like, oh, I've got all this kind of good skills and talents and all these kind of things, and then God realizes that, you know, you are kind of nothing, you are but dust compared to Him. And so, uh, being able to sort of meditate on, on His law, being able to meditate on the, the Word helps us to have like a healthy and a balanced and a hopefully a correct kind of view on God's will, His purpose and view on ourselves as well. And so we need to kind of see, I guess, the, the Word as being, the Bible as being uh, something of law, of, of authority. Uh, so that it can be a, something of love to us as well. But we need to see all the scripture as being yeah. kind of God breathed. Um, otherwise, we end up choosing which bit yeah. is correct or not. Mm -hmm. And it ends up being that I get to choose which bit's correct or, or not, which bit's I like believe in or which I like don't believe in, or which bit's I, I agree with or not. And I think there's there's the or which bit's I find easy and which bit's I don't. Uh, there's the danger because then my my decision is obviously better than, than scripture. The, mm. uh, it's all bits of scripture are God read, but the bits I don't like, yeah. uh, my breath is better in a, in a, in a, in a way of describing it. Uh, and I think there's you know there's uh, just hearing that if you if you look into the words and there's if you agree with everything that's in scripture or if you enjoy everything that's in scripture. <coughs> Probably not really reading it much. Like not, <laughs> not it. Yes. If the scripture is something that doesn't challenge you or things you wish you could, like just, oh, I'd be good if you could just kind of tip X this bit out or maybe change this word here. You know, a kind of natural kind of sense that should be a, an element because we gives us the opportunity to, to to wrestle and to have an actual relationship. You have a if you have someone where you disagree <coughs> with them. You all, when you only agree and never have the ability to disagree, then you don't have a relationship. You have a, a parent, perhaps, or you have a, someone that just agrees with you. Uh, so scripture has the ability to allow us to, to wrestle, to challenge this, and to be challenged with this, because it's a relationship with, with God. And with, the, with this understanding, we get to in essence, kind of preach to self, which sounds uh, very kind of new age uh, and a bit kind of uh, strange. Uh, but there's that ability to be convicted uh, by by studying the kind of the word and really uh, hearing it and listening to it. Okay, so we've looked at a little bit about what uh, meditation is. So it's the intense uh, focus. Um, it's, the, it's the intense focus of the mind to affect the heart. We've looked at uh, why we should kind of meditate, uh, because we understand God's will, His purpose and view of us. Um, but we're going to think about how do we actually do that? How do we actually meditate? It still sounds a bit, you know, what does that actually mean? Uh, when I kind of grew up as going to church, there's always like good things that I was like, oh, that sounds amazing, but what does that actually mean? And it just sounded a bit like a, a cliche or a, an empty thinking. So, um, uh, one of the elements that we can look at is to think, uh, to deeply think in three distinct ways. So uh, I'll try to explain this as well. So to think out, so to look at a scripture and to think out the implications, and I'll go into a bit more depth about these. To look at scripture and to think in, so look at the application of that kind of scripture. And then finally to think up, so to think about the response. So you think out, about that implications you think in, about the application to yourself, and you think of a better kind of response to, to God in essence. Come on. So we'll look at uh, each of these uh, just to kind of flesh it out a, a touch. Um, but I'm going to give you a bit of a, an example. Um, so take, why don't you take, uh, not necessarily now, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, this is kind of maybe kind of homework, if you want to call homework. Um, Put this slide up then so you can take a note of this properly. So take 30 minutes, so uh, get your phone and set it for 30 minutes. Take a note just now. 
And then during that time, you've got to think out, out, up, and in. Um, and then during that time, you're going to write down 50 points uh, in text. So a text, you're going to write down 50 distinct points, you know. Um, and this is your, your text. So come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. So Mark uh, chapter 1, verse 17. And um, it sounds kind of daunting, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I can do that for like 30 seconds. <laughs> and like 50 points, it's like that kind of crazy. Um, and it is kind of daunting, but it's also uh, good. I'll sh show you how that actually might kind of look and as such. And I can share the slides as well afterwards for anyone who wants. Um, so think uh, so think about the implications. So that's the uh, kind of the, the, the our kind of homework scripture, as it were, at the top. So think out the implications. So look at all the implications of the text. So consider aspects of the meanings. Another way you can help to kind of to do this is to um, emphasise each word to kind of help you kind of along. So you can read uh, as you read it. You can um, read like come follow me. Come, follow me. Uh, so I'll show you that a little bit more as well. Um, so what does each word kind of bring? And what is missing or what would be different if a word was changed? So these are just um, uh, useful kind of ways to help frame that, thinking about the implications. So a brief example or example of that with the scripture. So um, emphasize each word. So it could be, come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. Come, follow me, and Jesus said. Uh, so it kind of repeats kind of a, a bit, but you have 30 minutes, so it's, uh, it's okay if you have the time to do that. And repeating and emphasizing each of his words yeah. brings something a little bit different out, as it were, uh, as it did for me. The other option is to kind of remove each word. So how does this change the meaning? So we have come follow me, Jesus said. Follow me, Jesus said. Come, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. We kind of took out follow me because it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> uh, and then come follow, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. So what how does each of those three kind of change their meaning kind of subtly um, as a result of removing those kind of words? So that's kind of the, the thinking out. So, so thinking out the, um, the implications. Uh, the, um, and now we're going to think in, so thinking in about the application. So, uh, so the scripture is kind of talking kind of to you. Um, how do you apply this scripture to your own soul? What well, I've just looked at from thinking out, what uh, what do I learn? How does that kind of apply kind of to me? It's not kind of too much to say, but there is um, a couple of psalms actually that kind of uh, give you a bit of an illustration on this. Is the psalm is kind of thinking in about the applying of stuff uh, to to themselves, um, and I'll just read a touch, and you can just uh, refer to that later on. I'll put this up on the slides. So Psalm 42, it says, "As a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go to meet with God?" My tears have been uh, my food day and night, but people say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One, with sights of joy among the, uh, the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, 
uh, my salvation and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of Jordan, from the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep uh, calls to deep, in the roar of your waterfalls, all the waves of your breakers have swallowed me. So I guess uh, I can continue, but I'll, I'll not there. So just that, I guess that portion in verse 6, my soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the lands of the Jordan. So it's that kind of uh, self-reflection and that application to, to self as well. Mm-hmm. So how can you apply what you meditated on to this? So what you can apply uh, with regards to come follow me from Mark 1, uh, verse 17. Okay, and then uh, the final bit is to think up. So it's the, the response. So you kind of looked, you thought out, so you thought out um, the implications and you thought in about the application of this scripture to to yourself and now we're going to think up about the response and there are kind of three uh, areas of response so there is uh, by rejoicing so how can i praise god um, as a result of what i have kind of just been looking at so that's the rejoicing uh, repent so what sin can i confess as a result of what I've kind of looked at and what I've heard and, and, and learned from there. And request, what do I need to ask God for mm-hmm. as a result of what I've just kind of looked at? <clears throat> so you can think about how can I rejoice, mm-hmm. how can I repent, and how can I uh, request. Mm-hmm. So uh, yesterday I um, thought it would be sensible to potentially try and practice oh, something pretty long. Sure. Um, so I set my timer on my phone for 30 minutes <laughs> and, uh, and then I just kind of wrote down on a bit of paper yeah. this and then I uh, wrote down number one so um, on so it's two sides of A4 it's like 50 responses I think I got to 49 and the timer went out and then it just it smells um, and the example I haven't actually kind of gone through and, and looked at these but uh, in the um, the sermon, uh, I mentioned that he learned to do this in a, in a class and they were asked to kind of look at this very kind of scripture and the teacher said, you know, okay, you've got, you know, 50, you've got to write down 50 points in half an hour, so they kind of do that and then after you've done the 50, maybe circle the, the two or three that are the most uh, important or significant or things like that. They did that and the teacher then asked, okay, um, which of uh, which of the ones she circled, put your hands up if the one she circled came out in the first five minutes because no one put their hands up. In the first ten minutes and no one put their hands up. And it was the first fifteen minutes, you know, a couple of hands came up and, and as later on, uh, that's when the bits that had more value kind of came out. So I haven't actually had the chance to do that, so I, I don't know whether my first one's an amazing bit and or not, but I suspect kinda of not. Um, and it was amazing just to um, see so that's why and it did and it was a bit weird but it was also really good it was also really good just to get something from a scripture um, to, to this and I would kind of like to share some of those points but um, I think I would rather have you have the experience of doing that if you yeah. so desire as it were um, I haven't got anything prepared for maybe week on Wednesday so I might just kind of steal this yeah. and <laughs> do the homework together as it were <coughs> Uh, so yeah, so again, this is the kind of the, the kind of like kind of call to action, that kind of uh, bit of homework. It's the same sort of slide as before. So take thirty minutes to think out, so think out the um, the implications of, of the kind of scripture. To think in, thinking about the applications to yourself, and to think up, think about the response. So how can I uh, rejoice? How can I praise God? How can I repent? What sins can I, can I confess? And uh, how can I request? How can I come to God to, to ask for things, to write that down, give a, give a shot, have a, have a go at it. Uh, so we've looked at kind of three elements, you know, uh, this year we have a focus on faith, so just kind of conclude mm. and summarise things up. We have a focus on faith, so we're going to look at, um, uh, inspired by, by that kind of, uh, that book. Um, <laughs> and the first faith secret is that with more of God's word, you have the ability to have more potential faith, because faith comes from hearing the word. And uh, more of God's word includes obviously reading lots of scripture. So, 
uh, don't spend the rest of 2020 only ever reading one verse. For half yeah. <laughs> it's like it's, I mean, it's, there's a, a value in that, but there's also a value in being able to read tracks and tracks of scripture at yeah. times. So um, use your, your brain as it were, which we have to do. Uh, and we looked at uh, really Psalm one is a, it's a wonderful uh, passage on meditation, and it's, you see three aspects in there. So there's a perspective to delight in the word question about whether we kind of delight in the, the word, what is the level of the value that we see in God's word. There's a promise described in there about the blessedness uh, is the one who, who delights in the word and, um, and how they can grow uh, through the word despite the circumstances that will come their way. And then there's a practice, some of that kind of practical element of how to actually kind of meditate uh, to make a bit more kind of sense of it. So I hope that uh, is of kind of use and will be a good kind of application for yourself as well. Mm. So we're going to look again uh, at Psalm 1, but this time uh, leading us into thoughts on the communion. So we haven't taken a communion, so we're going to take a communion in many ways based on, on Psalm 1 um, and some thoughts in there. So if you should have your Bibles over there, um, we'll read the Psalm again. And <coughs> And for this, uh, we're going to look at um, Psalm 1 actually has two promises in it. So there's a promise of the one that's blessed, who's like the tree, and then there's also like a promise for the wicked, um, which is great. Uh, so, and um, as we prepare to take communion um, and we think about uh, the, the law, or think about any law, like a law can be fulfilled in, in one of two ways. So you can Fulfill a law by keeping what you're by doing what you're meant to do in it. So if you think of, um, I guess, texting while you're driving, that mm. is kind of against uh, the criminal law, but definitely warning offence. So to keep that law, you either uh, don't text when you're kind of driving, and then you're keeping it. The other way to keep a law is by paying the penalty if you. Um, are found texting, even if you're kind of at the traffic lights or those things that might be a bit kind of more disputable, uh, you pay the penalty. So you get the three points on your, your license and the, the fine. And both of those elements have kept the law. So the, the one that hasn't texted has um, kept what the law kind of requested. And the one who has been caught and has paid the penalty, who's got the points on their license, have also kept the law because they have pay the penalty for that. Mm -hmm. So there's only kind of two ways in which a, a law can be fulfilled. And uh, if you read kind of Psalm 1, you can think about Jesus um, and uh, he, in essence, kept both parts of the law. So he kept the part of uh, following the, all the commandments and all the, the laws and the decrees kind of perfectly, that he was with, without sin, so there was no he kind of wasn't texting when he was driving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to put it, to put it uh, this, in a different way, I'm pretty sure he had a hands free set anyway. Um, yes. But then he also fulfilled the law as well because he, he believed that he died and suffered for our sins. And he also paid the price. He also yeah. paid the penalty uh, of our sins. Mm. I'm going to look, read uh, Psalm 1 and compare and contrast the blessedness of the, the one that is near, as described as the tree. Um, and the, uh, the chap that is described as the, the wicked one. Um, and then we'll pray and we'll take uh, the communion. So it says, uh, Blessed is the, is the one who does not walk in steps with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of walkers, like Jesus did, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord. Again, Jesus delighted in his law, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked, what Jesus became. They are like chaff, so no root, no substance, no value, that, are blow, that the wind blows away, Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, 
nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, and the way of the wicked leads to destruction. So as we take the, the communion, we remember that uh, the way of the wicked led to destruction, and in many ways it led to the destruction of uh, Christ and the cross. Um, but there's also the promise and the hope that we get to be blessed despite that, and that we get to be one that can be described as being blessed because we get to draw near the waters that are in him and the eternal life that he provides.